Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Education Matters, where everything we talk about is education. If we talk sociology, it's the sociology of education. If we talk politics, it's educational politics. Education matters, and that's a double entendre because education is important, and also because everything we talk about on this show is about education. But well, before I get into that and before I, I, I begin to talk to my guest, as you know, I have my trusty education box. And this is, I think this is, I've had this in a couple of episodes uh, thus far, but it's my new trusty education box. And in this box, as you know, I have five items. That's right, five items. And let's see if I can get it open here. And those five items are symbolic of the importance of education. The first item I have here is a water bottle. And it says, education is a cure for ignorance. Education is a cure for ignorance. Ignorance means that you simply don't know, you lack knowledge. How else does one get knowledge? Through education. And it, it can be a formal education, such as you can get at Monroe County Community College, or it can be any type of education. It can be your education, for example, what we're going to be doing for frontliners. And, and, and again, these are challenging times for us in, in, in this nation and in this world today. So, the cure for ignorance. The second item I have in here is that education is a cure for poverty. Poverty. I remember my days of being poor in the ghettos of Baltimore, Maryland. And the only way for me to get out of that poverty was to get on those two buses and go to Morgan State University on the northwest side of Baltimore where I could get an education. And it changed life. It changed my entire life, getting that education. My mom had a seventh grade education. My dad had a ninth grade education. And I remember my dad getting his GED. And when he got his GED, I thought it was a PhD. <laughs> And that changed the trajectory of our family. And then me, when I ended up in the, in the inner cities of Baltimore, going to Morgan State, changed my entire life. And I'm here today, sitting here today as the president of our Monroe County Community College because of my education. So the cure for poverty, it cured my poverty. The third item I have in here is the good old key. And it says education is the key to success. It does not matter what your circumstances are, where you were born, how you were born, what neighborhood you're from. It doesn't matter. All that matters is if you get an education, then you can get this key to success, which will open all kinds of doors for you. Education is the key to success. The fourth item I have in here, and I've got to update this map, is... I have it right side up. It's uh, my, <laughs> my map, which indicates that education is, a, is, is the roadmap to prosperity. And again, prosperity is, is, is this point beyond poverty or beyond just uh, being comfortable where you can have anything you want. You can, ha you, you can buy anything you want, and you can be in a position where you are essentially not only doing for yourself, but doing for others. That's prosperity. And it is education that will get you to that point. And the final, the fifth and final item I have in here, this is a ticket. And it says, education is a ticket to the middle class. A ticket to the middle class. So what does it mean? When you think about the middle class as that group of individuals who really make most of the decisions, the largest group that we have here in, in, the, in these United States. It is those who make those decisions, as those who go out and vote, as those who essentially are living a comfortable life, like many of us out here. So if you're not in the middle class, the way to get into the middle class, and that's how I got to the middle class, is through education. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Five items in my box, my education box. The cure for ignorance, the cure for poverty, the key to success, the roadmap to prosperity, and that ticket to the middle class. That's what education can get you. And it, it, again, I just want to make the point 
that I can't think of any other profession. There is no other profession that can guarantee that it can get you all of this, lift you out of ignorance, poverty, ensure success, get you to the point of prosperity, and get you into, middle, into the middle class. That's how important education is. And that's why here at our Monroe County Community College, we provide education to make a difference in our community, to enrich and transform people's lives. So with that, I'm gonna to talk to an a, a educator here in our community. So my guest today is Paul Nolman, who is the Dean of Business and CIS at our Monroe County Community College. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Kojo. It's great to be here. All right. Very good. So I'll set this education box aside for now, but you know Don't it's Don't let it get right? too far away yeah, from we, you. Yeah, we can't. I can't, I can't leave home without it. So, Paul, <laughs> can you just uh, tell me a little about yourself? Well, you're the, you're, you're the dean of business and CIS. And CIS. But Compu before we get to that. Computers, right. Computers. Computers. All right. But before we get mm -hmm. to that. And computers are important, by the way. Before we get to that, tell us a little about yourself, if you want to, anything sure. personal about sure. you. Well, my wife and I live in Lambertville, okay. uh, South County. Um, I love South <laughs> County. I love South County. Me too. It's a great yes. place to live. My, <laughs> my son graduated from Bedford High School, so Bedford we're high fully in One of my favorite high schools. In that area. And um, <laughs> um, I'm in my 25th year here with the community college. Okay. Uh, the last 22 of those have been as a dean of the business and CIS division. Mm -hmm. um, it's been great. It's been more than I could imagine it ever would have been when I started here at the college. Yeah, very good. So in terms of education, your background, where did, where did you grow up? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Maumee, Ohio. Okay. And I... Across uh, the border? Have, yeah, it's across the border. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. It's yeah. a good place. Very similar so. to Bedford Township, I'll, yeah. I'll say that. Um, but I graduated from Bowling Green State University with a okay. bachelor's and a master's BGSU. degree. BGSU. Love that school. It's a great school. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So after that, what do you, go, what, what do, you do next? Um, after you, 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 you received your bachelor's and your master's from BGSU. At BG. Yeah. I was a graduate yeah. assistant there in the, okay. in the business area at okay. BG. Okay. Then I started at a, a little place in Toledo, a little place, very nice little college called Davis College, a proprietary yeah. institution. Okay. Then I moved up to Adrian College in Adrian, Michigan, in Adrian. and I worked there for 10 years in the, in, as a professor of business, and then I ran the Academic Advising and Career Development Center there. At, at Adrian? At Adrian, okay. right. And then uh, after that 10 years, I came over here and I, my first position at the college was in the corporate and community services area uh, doing small business counseling yes. and employment yes. services. Okay. And then the opportunity to move into the business division as the dean came along and uh, as they say the rest is history. Yes, yes. And you've been the dean now for how many About years? 22 years. 22 About years? About 22 years. Yeah. Very yes, good. Sir. Very good. And the business division is one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, we have here. In the occupational college. area, the business management uh, degree, the number of students who indicate business management, I believe is still the largest occupational program. Uh, we always have a, a good number of graduates. Our health sciences and nursing programs have been growing as they have all across the state. Sure. So sure. they might be giving us a run for our money there a little bit. but. Uh, yeah. Uh, we do very well. We've got 14 different programs between business programs. We have accounting is in our area, uh, and we have the culinary arts program is within our, our division. Maybe the we'll talk a moment about the new the new new uh, revamp program there. And then we have about nine computer-based programs, everything from graphic design to uh, programming. And uh, one of our most popular programs is cybersecurity, yeah, which is yeah, a, a very, very exploding needed. field. Very it, much it, maybe I shouldn't say that an exploding field yeah. <laughs> in cybersecurity, but it, it is quite a growing field, yes. Very good. So in, in, in terms of your business programs, I understand you have a, um, a certificate program in small business or in entrepreneurship? Right. It's, it's just a four class. Uh, program, if we'll call it that, and it is a certificate, okay. Okay. and it involves our intro to uh, entrepreneurship course, 
and then we have an advanced uh, small business application course okay. at the end of that. And so um, most students will take those courses on their way to the associate's sure. degree. Sure. Um, we haven't awarded a lot of those, but the ones that do finish it, uh, they find it really helpful and beneficial, and it, it's a good springboard on to the associate degree. So it essentially, with one could start with that program. Absolutely. And then it's stackable to... Stackable certificates are something that we've really taken to heart in the business division. Uh, that's a good one in the business management area. You can get an accounting certificate that then can lead you okay. to the associate degree. Okay. Probably one of our programs that applies the concept of stackable certificates the best is our graphic and media design program with Professor Hesser, who ah. teaches that. And we have as little as a 12 credit certificate up to a 31 credit certificate, okay. which builds you to the 60 credit associate Excellent. degree. Excellent. And that's a that's a wonderful program. He's a wonderful professor who is an expert in the field. So um, anybody who's interested in the arts and using computer within the arts and graphic design, that's a great program for somebody in, in that field, in Very that good. interest area. Very good. What I like about Stackables is, is that, let, let's say, if, if someone were to come here to seek an associate degree, and it's a 60-hour program, mm -hmm. and they get in the program and they achieve 59 hours, and they haven't completed the 60, for example, right. they, they leave and they leave here. Well, when somebody asks the question, what are your credentials, it's, it, and you have to check a box. You can't check associate degree. No. Nope. You probably check some college. Right. What is some college? You know, that's not a question for you, but what, 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 what is some college? Well, if you were, if you, we, had, we have stackable certificates. Mm -hmm. You can at least say you have a certificate in something. Right, and you've always talked about a, a, a certificate of economic value that the, right. that the right. student or graduate can take into the, into the economy yeah. and into industry, and right. I think that's a, that's a great line that you're the first yes. I've heard use that, that yes. type of phrase before. But what I also like about it is one thing I always encourage students, if they're getting close to a certificate or if they're getting close to a degree, and life happens sometimes and they say, well, I'm not coming back or, gee, I think I might take a year off. That's the worst thing I hear students say. They're going to take a year off. Well, many times a student won't come back won't after come back. taking a yeah. year off. I always tell them, get the degree, get the certificate. That is something you will have in your back pocket mm -hmm. that no one can ever, ever take, take away, away from you. you. Education. Education no is, a, ever is a education lifelong investment. Oh. Yes. And that's what the education box helps tell us, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. So essentially, one, with, with, there's a new program, a statewide program called Futures for Frontliners. Right. And Futures right. for Frontliners, if you have individuals out there, and it's, it's not only for individuals in the health area. Right. All those individuals who are essentially front, frontliners, you think about individuals who are working when some of us where you know there, there was a shut uh, 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 sh shuttering in. Right. There were those who were compelled right. to work. Right. Some individuals who work at the grocery stores, the retail outfits, the banks. Mm -hmm. We still needed all these right. individuals. The, the ones working in the computer area. In the computer area, keeping our computers functioning and safe. Yes, these um, were, these are all front truck lines. drivers, folks truck drivers, like this. They're all front right. lines. Essential workers. Essential workers. That's that, that's the expression. Mm -hmm. Essential workers, and so. We have all these essential workers out there who can actually come here, take advantage of the futures for frontliners, attend this institution for what? Free. Right. Free. No tuition costs. No to those tuition students. costs. Right. And perhaps get a, a, a certificate or a degree mm -hmm. in. Oh, one we'd of like many, them to take business courses, yes. <laughs> <laughs> one of the many areas that you're in charge of. Right. And a lot of people can apply basic business courses to any sort of career path. Yes. Uh, we have marketing courses, finance courses, computer courses embedded, economics courses. Uh, those all help you lead to a, a career path, and that's yeah. what, or they lead to transfer opportunities at universities, too. And, and that, that's important. That's, that, that's important. But, and hopefully when that goes out, our, our governor and, and even the federal governor will step in and help 
those people with maybe a new program and possibly continue that yes. that idea. Yes, yes, we're hoping so. In the fall, next fall, 2021, will be the MI Reconnect, Michigan okay. Reconnect, which will be free college for individuals who are 25 and over. Oh, excellent. So excellent. the frontliners is designed for frontliners mm -hmm. while come, in, come the fall, there'll be one for anybody who's 20, 25 and over for the adult population. I didn't know that so was coming, the return yeah, to learn folks. Yeah, right. that's yeah. coming. Excellent. MI Reconnect, that's coming soon. Excellent. So tell me a little bit about the partnerships that you have. You're, you're the business guy and I, uh, actually in previous lives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 uh, that, that's what I did as a, right. I was a dean at three different business institutions, um, progressively larger. And, and, and then I became a provost, and, and then um, and now I'm here, which is a good thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want to say, no, no, I'm not, I'm not in <laughs> academics anymore. Well, I, I am, I am in academics. You're the head academician here. Don't, yes. don't fool <laughs> yeah. anybody. Great stuff. So, um, yeah, can you, t can, can you, you know, t t tell me a little bit, bit about, you know, your, your area partnerships. What are sure. some partnerships that you have? Timacog, um, partnerships with, with other schools, for example. Let me touch on that. Let me touch yes. on that right now. The uh, articulation agreements and transfer agreements that we have with other area universities and colleges is actually a growing point of emphasis for us because um, so many jobs will take a bachelor's degree, but the bachelor's degree is out of reach for some individuals just because of the expense. These agreements that we have allow students to come here to the community college and take actually upwards of 80 credits here at the community college, at community college tuition rates, and transfer all 80 of those credits to a university. Oh, really? They will accept all those credits. Wow, what a deal. It is. Now, a, can you give me a, an a example of some, some universities well, that we have these a couple of our with. A couple of our best partners are Eastern Michigan University. Eastern, yes, uh, we good have school. A number, we have a number of agreements with Eastern Michigan. They have a very formalized program. Our newest one with Eastern Michigan is a Bachelor of Science through the Health and Human Services College okay. for sport management. Oh. So you can take up to 72 credits here, transfer them to Eastern, and major in sport management. Very good. And that means you only have to take in the neighborhood of 40 or so credits at Eastern at their tuition yeah, rates. Tuition. And it's, it's much higher than ours. Oh, it's, it's definitely yeah. over double. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so that's, a great, uh, that's a great opportunity for students. Another very important agreement that you actually just signed within the last few days uh, is an agreement with the University of Toledo their College of Business and Innovation has partnered with us to offer a transfer agreement, a formalized transfer agreement in the area of supply chain management and logistics. Very good. Very a good. hugely growing field. It a, is. A, it uh, is. It's just expanding like crazy. How do you get a product from where it is, uh, when it's produced into the hands of a consumer? That's right? it. Every, it and everything along the way. All of that. Uh, all of that. And you think about the season that we're right. in. And we have, I know uh, community residents sometimes think, gee, where is my next job or ne my next opportunity here in Monroe County? Where is it going to come from? Well, all you have to do is look up towards Detroit and you see a giant new bridge being built. Yes. The yes. Gordie Howe uh, International Crossing. Yeah. I've heard that over 65% of the commercial traffic that crosses that bridge will make a left turn, yeah. which has folks coming right through Monroe. Yeah. And there are going to be bulk breaking areas, portal. there's going to be shipping depots, there's yes. going to be warehousing. Yes. All yes. those need professionals in the supply chain field. Yes. So yes. UT has joined with us in this partnership Excellent. and we're very excited to have that one. Excellent. Can't forget Sienna Heights, a long, long time partner yes. of MCCC. Yes. And uh, they have, they, they actually located, they have a location here on this campus. And they have a lot of classes that they offer online, but also they will have yes. classes offered here in, in a typical non-COVID uh, term. Sure. So uh, let's uh, stay on, on the topic of Siena Heights. You mentioned eight, 80 credit hours being transferred, but with Siena Heights, I think individuals can take up to? Up to three 90. years of, yes, up 90, to three which years makes it of a your degree. Three plus one, if you will. 
Right. Three years here at our cost, and then one year at Siena Heights. Right. And, and they don't even have to leave Monroe. That's exactly right. With online education opportunities, yeah. and uh, if there are some face-to-face -face classes, right. they'll right. be here on our even campus. Even before COVID, they didn't. Oh, before COVID, yeah. Yeah, they yeah didn't very have much to leave. so. So great, great partnership with, with Siena Heights. We right. appreciate Siena Heights. We appreciate all, all our other partners right. in the articulation programs. And there are others uh, that, that, we, that we don't sure. use nearly as well. Northwood's sure. uh, Northwood University is a, a very good partner. University of Michigan Dearborn, I have to mention them in the computer sure. area. Sure. We have a great two plus two program with them in co uh, computer science and computer engineering. Right. So that's another great partnership. Yes, yes. So from 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 that, what about? So you talked about the artic articulations. Mm -hmm. So what about? some partnerships, other partnerships that we have, some corporate partnerships, Timacog, mm -hmm. for example, um, or any other corporate partnerships that we may have out there. We work closely with Timacog. I'm a member of the board with the Timacog, and that's a group out of Toledo. It's Toledo Area Metropolitan Council of Governments. And being that uh, we have such action in South County, and South County is a growing part of our entire Monroe County. Sure. Timacog actually reaches into the southern uh, yeah. uh, townships. Right. And right. so by having a representative on the board from Monroe County, and especially from the college, that allows us to tap into all the projects that are coming out of Toledo, which include highway renovations, water uh, quality projects, uh, economic development projects, training. Sure. So it, it's very, very much a good relationship there. I know you participate in SEMCOG out right. of, out of right. the so Detroit southeast. region north yep. of us. Um, it's the yes. southeast. Right. So you've been highly involved with that. We yes. work with the Chamber of Commerce closely, yes. of course, here in the county. Yes. And the Business Development Center uh, Corporation is another BDC, important partner. I serve on the board of the BDC. Right. And, and so that's where I want to go next with the uh, Monroe Link Plan. Monroe Link Plan, yes. Which right. is an effort to redevelop it is Monroe, right? And, and so you're involved in that now. So can I'm you tell me a little the, bit about that? I'm involved with the Grow Strategically Committee, which okay. is aimed at entrepreneurship and small businesses. Yes. And yes. Barry Kinsey, who's also a member of our right. team here at the college, uh, he and I participate in that committee, and we're making great headway to um, open up opportunities for people who are just fledgling business owners with an idea all the way up to folks who may have an operating business, but our maker space over in the CTC is yes. an opportunity for uh, people who are interested in maybe developing a prototype or having right. something 3D image creation or um, CAD and drafting support or electronics. The, the facilities of our CTC can be open to businesses yes. to come over here right. and test their idea, do some small manufacturing, uh, proof of concept things, they'll be involved with that. So I've really enjoyed working with the folks through the Monroe County Link Program and uh, it's going to pay great dividends for my, the committee I, I work with is going to pay great dividends for smaller businesses, startups, entrepreneurs. So uh, Excellent. we have good representation there. Very good. And earlier you mentioned South County. Mm -hmm. Temperance, um, Lambertville, mm -hmm. and in South County we have a location, the Whitman Center. Whitman Center. So, in terms of the Whitman Center and outreach and and, and uh, to South County and South County is, a, is an in integral part of, of, of Monroe County. We 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 really appreciate our our, our people in South County. I'm on the B, uh, I'm, I work with the BBA, the Bedford Business BBA. Association. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, there's a, there's a, a group called the Women of Bedford United, mm -hmm. and so they get a group of men to serve them tea once a year. <laughs> anyway, yeah, <laughs> and uh, so I know that I know of that group. You yeah, know about definitely, that group, I right. do. Yeah, they're uh, high tea. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, there's the Lions Club there, and we have one of our board members, Mary Kay, who serves in the Lions mm -hmm. Club. But there's a lot happening in South County, and Al Whitman Center is right there, and and South County it, 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 it voted. Bedford, this time, we, we received 57% of the vote. Mm -hmm. And I was on a, on a call with them last week or the week before thanking them mm -hmm. for supporting our millage renewal. Six years ago when we went, it failed. We received 28% of the vote. 
Four years ago, it passed, we received 45% of the vote. Mm -hmm. This year, we received 57% of the vote. And, and, and that's, that's, that's phenomenal. But, well, that's me talking. You know, I'm really <laughs> excited about you know, South County voting for us. But, but we, we've got to put up or shut up. There's some, we've, got, we've got to make a difference in South County, and that's through the Whitman Center. We have so a tell great, me a little bit about We have Whitman a great Center. facility for anybody who's not been by it or been in there for anything. Um, it, it's, it's got plenty of parking. It has 10 classrooms that are usable. Uh, there's been talk of maybe we'll do some entrepreneurship development yes. through the Whitman yes. Center as part of part right. of the program. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's some yeah. other academic programs that we might sure. take to the Whitman sure. Center. We need to revitalize the Whitman Center to make Bedford and South County point, a better place. And to that point, I mentioned Barry Kinsey a little while ago. Barry yes. Kinsey's going to be part of and serve with the uh, Lewis Avenue Redevelopment Committee out of Bedford Township. Excellent. And so Barry will take his expertise into yes. into that committee yes. and yes. we got a call from the township supervisor saying Whitman is so important to yes. Lewis Avenue redevelopment please we would like someone to participate on that very committee good. and so we have a we have a very good relationship with yes. the township supervisor and the yes. deputy supervisor yes, we do. We do. At, at, in, in we uh, do. Bedford Township we do and and uh, a part of what we're going to be doing at the Whitman Center Yes, we will, and here on, on the main campus, we do have, for most of our buildings, a geothermal system here. We're going to be installing mm -hmm. geothermal with this new millage money. Uh, millage money. Mm -hmm. It's going to be approximately $1.5 million at the Whitman Center. Probably didn't know this. So we will have geothermal at the Whitman Center. We'll renovate the place, the Whitman Center, to make it more attractive for Bedford residents to utilize that mm -hmm. place. And we may, maybe we'll have a, a you know, a criminal justice center, well, but something, there are going to be exciting things happening. We currently have a survey out in the Bedford area, so individuals in Bedford can tell us what it is that they want to see us do. Which, which is South a good thing County. to do, yes. to, to yes. Keep, our, keep our communication yes. level high with the high school. Yes. Uh, again, yes. great people at the high school. Yep. Um, and yep. then ask the community. Yes. I, I think it, it's, it's a jewel just waiting to be discovered down in, yes. in Bedford Township. I, yes. I continue yeah. to believe that. It is. It is. Well, Paul Nolman, <laughs> I want to thank you very much for oh, thank your you. time today. It's been great. I, yes, yes. I, I appreciate it. A lot, lots of things happening in business, lots of partnerships, articulation agreements with schools, mm -hmm. uh, um, partnerships with the Link, Link Plan, uh, um, Bedford. Bedford Township. We reach out to south. the we reach out to the communities of, of the as, as much Even as we south can. South of the border right. with, with with Timacog. Timacog, yep, yep. Uh, Timacog mm -hmm. and, and, and the many programs that we have in business and let's uh, business and CIS. Can't forget CIS. Cyber and culinary. culinary. Oh, culinary. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get a chance to really talk short, about. I didn't really get a chance to talk about culinary. New revamp program okay. will really hit the ground running in fall of twenty one with a full slate of classes. Closely. Stand by for more information. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We really didn't get to that, but thank you very much, Paul Nolman. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, ladies and gents, thank you very much for joining us for another episode of Education Matters, and we will see you next time.